Good morning, you guys, and welcome back to Too Cute for Cancer. I feel so bad for being out for so long. Um, I wasn't even going to be back today because, <coughs> um, as you can see, I'm still kind of down. I am feeling, oh my gosh, like 100% better. But I am telling you, I have been so, so sick. I just, my husband was getting super freaked out. Um, and we kept testing me for COVID because even though I've had COVID before they had the vaccines, I was one of those lucky folks that, you know, were the first to get it or in the first group to get it. And I had it, I had it pretty good. I mean, but I didn't, no hospitalization, you know, it just basically aches, pains, headaches, a um, little bit of a sore throat, um, mostly respiratory. The first time I had a lot of, um, because I have asthma, um, that complicated things a little bit, but Overall, I mean, I recuperated within the 10 days and I was up and going. I didn't have any um, other than feeling very fatigued for very long. I didn't have any um, long-term side effects or anything um, of it. So I was extremely just lucky and grateful and all of those things. Okay, so then, um, then I got vaccinated. And uh, then I got COVID again. <laughs> like six months later, I got COVID. And it was mild. Um, I ended up, actually, I was at the hospital, but not for COVID, but I was in the hospital for dehydration. And they tested me. And they're like, did you know you have COVID? I was like, uh, I was vaccinated. I'm like... I don't feel like I did the first time and they said it was the the lighter the um um I can never say it the omicron and they said that it was um a lot of people don't ever even know they have it it just kind of passes through and goes it's like better than a cold they said so I was like oh okay great cuz I don't like colds either, but I'll take anything other than the first time around, you know. So I had it at that time, and um, the doctor said, you know, you've got the best immune support or immune defense now because you've had both uh, strains, or at least they're assuming. I don't know how they know that. Hmm. But anyway, um, you've had both strains, and you've had your vaccinations and so basically you're good to go i mean you've got a good um immune system they're going against it so i've been extremely happy about that so when i got so sick i i told ray i'm like i swear this is worse than covid it's just got to be it's got to be COVID again. I mean, because what else is, could it be? You know, I was just like in my mind, and I think everybody's mind just kind of jumped, must be COVID, which just shows us <laughs> a little lesson in life. We don't know everything. And our bodies have been getting sick way before COVID. And guess what? Strep throat has been around a very long time too. And I've had strep throat a lot of times. And that's what I had. I had strep throat and it was just, and it's funny because I had like, my throat hurt really, really bad. It hurt to swallow. My glands were swollen. High, high fever. Um, okay. Somebody is. Oh, it's my mummy. I'll have to call her back in a moment. She's calling every day to find out how I'm feeling. <laughs> but um, anyway, I don't even know why. I should have figured it out. Like Because that raw feeling, like raw hamburger, sorry you guys, 
in your throat when you get strep throat. I mean, it's like so, it's like you never forget it once you have it. And yet my mind was still stuck on, I have COVID. It's like, I think just because of the way the culture has been lately and how it's overtaken our our whole world and how scary it's been and how many people we've lost to it. And um, it, it's just, you know, I guess that psych psychologically it does something to you as well as physically. So anyway, three tests later, <laughs> no COVID. But then they um, oh did a little swab thing of my throat and said, you've got strep throat. And I mean, looking back at my throat, uh, my husband said that it looked like little pus pockets all over, like little sores and stuff. I was like, oh, no wonder I didn't feel very good. So anyway, I, I was just so sick. I just, I mean, my fever was like 102.9. And then it was going kind of up and down, up and down. And then um, I got the cough. Um, and respiratory wasn't, I mean, I could breathe fine. I didn't have any, like, wheezing. Um, my asthma acted up a couple times, maybe a couple when I was coughing. I'd get coughing. And then my asthma would be like, whoa, wait a minute, you know. But overall, um it was okay. It was just like one of those phlegmy coughs that sound really bad, but aren't really bad because my lungs were not wet. They were clear. So anyway, uh, not a fun week, I must say. I came down with it Tuesday. Tuesday, I wasn't feeling, I was I was feeling okay, but I was feeling a little achy. But for me, it is so hard to know whether achy means cancer achy or achy means like fever, sick achy. Until I actually start running a fever, I just, I literally, I don't know. So, you know, there you have it. So, uh, Tuesday, I went to bed that night. I went to bed early and I started just shivering. And I was like, oh man, I'm getting sick. That's what it is. So, um, then after that, it just like boom, 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 headache, you know, stiff arms, shoulders, body hurts. I mean, you know, just everything kind of hit me all at once after the fever hit. So anyway, every day I kept thinking, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be better. I'm going to get up. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to you know, take this antibiotics, it's going to be fine. And then the next day I would feel worse. And it's just, that's why I kept testing. I kept telling Ray, test me again, test me again, because I just was certain it could just be regular sickness because I just felt like I should be over faster. But in reality, I was over COVID faster than this stupid sucker. So, you know, Anyway, I am definitely feeling like I turned a corner in the last couple of days. <coughs> Actually, yesterday, I feel like I just kind of turned that corner. You know that feeling of like, ah, oh, I'm feeling better. I want to take a shower. I know you start planning everything you want to do because you've been stuck in bed all week. That, yeah, that's how I've been feeling. I started watching all my YouTube channels. I didn't even watch TV all week long. I couldn't even focus on the TV. My husband would say, do you, do you want me to put the TV on for you? And I was like, I'm like, oh, just go away. I, don't, I just, I don't know, you know. And so he went ahead and hooked up the TV in our bedroom because we didn't have a TV in the bedroom. And now we do, thanks to hubby. He's always so thoughtful, but look at that. Say hi, TV. I have a TV right there in front of my bed, which we weren't going to put a TV in here because right outside that door is the living room with the couch with the TV. <laughs> but 
but I'm glad he did because like today I've been what yesterday and today I've been watching uh, decorating videos and you know getting my mind and stuff kind of caught up with life again um, so that's what I've been doing for the week just whining and crying <laughs> Um, drinking tons and tons of icy water. Um, another thing Hubby did, he fixed the ice, uh, ice maker in our refrigerator. And he ran our purified water that we have. We have a, a special machine underneath the sink. And he ran that to the main water line so it would go and make us nice, good, fresh uh, purified ice so that was so cool so I had a lot of um, crushed ice with water and then lemon from the lemon tree and then I had hot tea with honey and lemon that was so good and um, yeah it's you know as far as being sick I've been kind of pampered a bit uh, I don't know there's not much else going on. I didn't go anywhere other than to the doctors and back. Um, it was a little bit windy here, which did not make things any better. Um, I did not take my any of my supplements while I was sick. Not even my, I should have, my vitamin C and my D, especially my C, but I just could it just hurt so bad to swallow. I just couldn't do it. I was just like, forget it. I, just let me get through the next couple of days and I'll start taking them again. So uh, this morning I got up and I got my little box of millions of different supplements and I started taking um, my CDB12 niacinamide um Cinegut because I really should have kept the Cinegut going because that keeps it's like puts good bacteria in your your gut and it keeps you regular and with morphine and laying still and not getting a lot of movement and stuff you know I could have used that but hindsight right so um, I started back with my Cinegut but what I was gonna tell you guys because I haven't had the BioFit for, let's see, the last time I took a BioFit was last Tuesday. So this Tuesday will be one week without it. But you can't count that because I haven't eaten hardly anything. I mean, I've eaten, I nibbled on cold berries. Um, I had, uh, like, uh tofu leftover tofu with a little bit of sauce on it just something soft and easy to get down um i didn't eat enough to keep a bird alive honestly so we can't we can't count anything in the last week as being uh anything other than just not eating <laughs> so i thought since i'm already off the biofit for the last week i would go ahead now that I'm, I'm definitely eating, and I'm eating enough. Like yesterday, I was like, Chinese food sounds so good. And my son um, brought me Chinese food and stuff, and it did taste so good. <laughs> all the sodium and all the calories, I didn't care. And um, then I had vegan mac and cheese one night. The high calories, high fat, so good. And then I had a vegetarian pizza. I've been eating. I've been making up for last time, let's just say. So anyway, um, I'm going to weigh tomorrow morning. And then I'm going to stay off the BioFit for two weeks. And I'm going to give it a test run. I'm going to go back to eating exactly the way I was eating. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to... I'm just going to do exactly what I was doing while I was taking it. And I want to see if it is a placebo effect. You know, you guys know what a placebo effect is, right? Where you are given like a pill and you're told that it's going to do something. And it works because psychologically 
you think it's going to work. So, you know, you start eating the right way. You start doing the right things, whatever. But it's actually a placebo. That's how they test a lot of uh, different um, medicines and groups. They'll, you know, divide you up into different groups and they'll give one person a sugar pill. The other person will get the trial med. And then, but they're, but nobody knows who has what. And then they document the whole thing. So, all right. I, um, my husband says, you know, whenever you are really positive about something and you're eating right and stuff, you, you seem to lose weight pretty easy. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm like, I've never lost weight because I've never really been fat before. I argued it out with him big time, let me tell you. <laughs> and he goes, no. He says, I remember a couple times you said you're going to lose five pounds. And, and I was like, whatever, just just go away. <laughs> I'm bad sometimes. I really am. So anyway, I thought, let's find out. Is it a placebo effect or is it actually working? I don't know if it'll even work that way. But for two more weeks, okay, I've been off for one week, but we're going to discount that one because I'm sick. For two weeks, I'm going to purposely not take it. I'm going to do everything I normally do. Um, eat my whole food, plant food, uh, foods. I am adding extra vitamin C in this week. Um and I'm also going to up my vitamin D, try to get some extra sunlight. Um, yeah, but other than those things, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to take all my other supplements, though. My Ulta Balance for my uh, blood sugar, uh, Cinegut, all that kind of stuff I'm going to take. Um, but I'm not going to take uh, just the BioFit. That's it. I'm going to just put a pin in it for two weeks. And then see what the scale says. And pray, don't, I hope and pray, don't gain. But we'll see. And it doesn't even prove anything anyway. But I just want to, I'm going to be curious now that I've kind of got the ball, ball rolling. Um, yeah, see, just talking this length of time, I'm getting really tired. Um, trying to think if there's anything else wonderful going on in my life that I don't, I mean, around and about me. Huh. Oh, uh, my, as you guys know, we're going to be a grandma again, two times. My uh, foster daughter is due any day now. So we are just like, we're watching and waiting for our little baby boy to be born. So that is super, super, super exciting news. And then um, my son and daughter-in-law, who are adopting, uh, went to their adoption class yesterday. And they passed their first round. All their paperwork is approved. Um, so they've got to do five more. They have to do six classes. They did one. They have five more classes to go. And then after that, they get... Um, Oh, oh, their home study, they have to go and check, do the checklist of the house. And they're working on that right now. They're feverishly trying to get things done. And um, my husband and I, all the grandmas and grandpas, have to go get fingerprinted and our CPR done. Um, because we have a pool. And we're going to, what we're going to do is my sister teaches CPR, my baby sister. And so what I think we're going to do is have um, Jen come to the house and teach the whole family um, CPR and pool safety. And it's, an, it's not just regular CPR uh, when you have a pool. There's like another level to it that you need to learn. So um, we're going to do that. So the whole entire family... We'll have CPR and safety and everything, which we already did that when my sister uh, moved into their house with a pool. And that was like, Arr! I want to say five years ago, but I'm sure that we all we're all expired now. So we'll just do it again 
and that'll be great. And then fingerprints, um, we go down to it's a, the adoption agency or the place that they're using is called Olive Crest. Shout out to Olive Crest, yay! <laughs> That's where I adopted both my babies from is Olive Crest, so I'm a little bit partial. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was really exciting. One baby on the way and then another one possibly on the way. Who knows? We don't know what the time frame is going to look like. Just whenever a baby needs a home, I guess. So that'll be exciting, too. Um, oh, Ken, <gasps> we're getting a horse. I'm not getting a horse. My granddaughter is getting a horse. We all, she just loves to ride. She, she likes, she does, like, shows. And it's just, like, it's her passion. And for me, I think when a child has a passion, something positive, I think we need to feed it and you need to help it. You need to support it because there's so many things in this world that are non-productive and that are not good for our children to get into. Things that they can fall into out of boredom, out of whatever. But if they have something that they're focusing on passionately that is positive, that the family can get behind and it can be a family event, then um, I think it's just a huge win, especially for teenagers, especially today and today's age. Well, probably forever, <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, we are all pitching in. We're going to get um, her uh, horse and we're going to, if there's a stable by our, by our house and we're going to rent uh, rent a place for it to stay, and then she's going to, of course, take care of it. And her other grandma on the other side, actually, it's her great grandma, uh, has a horse, and uh, she used to go riding with her grandma and do all that stuff. So they'll have both the horses there. And one of our really, really good friends in church, uh, she has, she rides horses, shows horses, does all that kind of stuff. So she's kind of taken Taylor under her wing, and um, which will be really cool. So anyway, a new baby, a new baby on the way, and a horse. Can't ask for more than that, now can you? All right, you guys. Oh, and just to clarify, um, I put it in my community notes, but I was reading through my um uh, comments today and I noticed that somebody didn't get the notice um, people keep complaining about my titles not just about the titles but my titles my uh, oh my eyeliner which by the way is permanent eyeliner so they might as well stop complaining because can't take it off because it is there permanently Anyway, about, I mean, just a myriad of things, okay? So they can just stop. Everybody can stop. If you don't like the title, keep moving. If you don't like the video, click off. I have found my power, you guys. I worked so hard on this channel. I took a year worth of uh, training from YouTube. YouTube puts this out, by the way. Um, and then I bought a program, I pay for a program, it's called TubeBuddy, that works with the algorithm so my videos can be seen. And I, I don't even choose my titles, and then I get yelled about it. I get cussed at, screamed at, and yelled at, and shamed. But this is the deal. If I don't use these devices like TubeBuddy and YouTube, YouTube. I've got three seconds for people to look at a, uh, a teaser. That's what it is. And if you look at everybody else's, everybody's channel, everybody's does a little teaser. Unless they're really big, they can put whatever they want. But the little guys have to fight for a place in line, and that is just a fact. So if, if people don't like it, they don't have to watch it. They can click off and move on. I understand, but... I'm frustrated. I'm done with it. And any negative comments about anything personal, then I will just absolutely just 
bounce you right off and I'm not going to read you and I'm not going to respond. I usually respond to everything from here on out. It's not going to happen. I'm going to take all of my energy and all my efforts and focus it on the 99% of you that are absolutely precious and loving and supportive and that feed my soul. So there you have it. Oh, and I got something in the mail. Uh, It's not here and I can't get to it. Okay, Thursday, I'm going to show you all the goodies I got in the mail from you guys. Presents, I got a couple presents from you guys. I got uh, cards, I got Get Well cards. Oh my gosh, you guys are just so incredible. I can't even, I can't even tell you how much that, just like meant to me and not just me but my husband too he was just like so touched it was just they're all everyone's so so careful to always add him in and tell him thank you and say hi and it just is such a blessing you guys are such a huge blessing in my life so thank you for that And if you have not been following my journey and you have no idea what I'm talking about or rambling about, you can go back and watch. I'll post a video or a link up here in the corner and you can click on that and find out what I'm talking about. You can go back and you can watch some prior videos and it'll give you a little bit of background about me. But basically, I have stage four metastatic uh, breast cancer that has spread to my bones Uh, One spot is in my spine, uh, hip bone, long bone, and my sternum. And they, those tumors have sat there. They have not moved. And we are so grateful for that. Uh, They're not growing at this time. So I'm just living every day as if it were my last day and enjoying it. So there you have it. All right, you guys. Love you all. This is Too Cute for Cancer, signing off. Whenever you're down, out in the cold, faithless and dark, your story.